mentioned Monaco 2001 and I did want to ask you about that race because for listeners who can't remember or don't know about it David Coulthard was on pole position he stalls on the grid is forced to start at the back and he comes up behind the arrows of Enrique Bernoulli and cannot get past you keep him at bay for what is it 35 laps I mean how do you reflect on that race you know do you know what I take from that race Tom it's like um Everybody say, oh, it was your best race in Formula 1. We, that was so great and so on and so on. You hold a guy which had a two and a half second faster car than you. And yes, the track also helped me. You know, It's not that I'm holding him in Monza or, or in, uh, in Hockenheim. But uh, what I take as a compliment for me is that I was under a lot of pressure. I had no power steering on my car. That thing was heavy. And I had a car, the, the pole seater going all over my mirrors and I didn't do a mistake. I think that that's what I, I take as a, as a positive point for me. It also was really difficult to manage how to let Schumacher, Rubens, Ralph, the leaders lap us without making him pass. So I always had to plan. Honestly, I wasn't planning to hold him. When I saw him, I, I had to let Jos pass. So I was pissed. And then I see Coulter on, on the back and I'm thinking, oh, no, two laps one lap he will pass he tried twice at Mirabeau and I let I led the space but I think he was not convinced maybe you know as I was a rookie maybe he thought oh, this guy would just turn on me you know something like that and I saw him and I wouldn't turn on him and and by doing that by letting him the space I touched the, the marbles and I almost crashed twice at Mirabeau and that sort of like pissed me off I said well I let open twice and I almost crashed now I'm not gonna let open anymore and the, the more laps pass by, more arrows start to come on, on the radio and say, yes, let's go, let's go, keep him, keep him. So sort of like I grew up, I grow, I like the, the, the feeling growing to me to, to fight against him. And um, yes, that's how, how it was. What did David say to you after the race? He didn't say anything to me. It was a little bit done by the media, Ron Dennis and Norbert Haug. They said stuff to me. So did they come and find you afterwards? Um, my car broke. <laughs> my broke. My car broke on the after the finish of the race broke just before the tunnel. Oh, well, on the slowdown lap. Yeah, on the slowdown. The my car broke be, just before before the tunnel. I had no drink bottle on the on the car because on the formation lap, that the tube was touching my 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 mouth was hurting. So I pushed a little bit and slide out of the helmet. So uh, I had cooter behind for 44 laps. I had no power steering, I had no drink bottle after a, after a Monaco race, so I was completely exhausted. And I have the car break down at the end, uh, before, just before the tunnel, so the medical car brings me back to the pits, and I'm, I go to the, to the scrutiny, to the scales, and, you know, by the order of the team, so it was Ferrari, McLaren, I have to cross in front of their pits, and, I ha and I'm dressed in an orange, air, in an orange overall, so... And I'm thinking just, I hope nobody sees me. I hope nobody sees me. I just want to walk by and go and get to two arrows. That's what I was thinking in my head. And I'm passing by walking quite fast, <laughs> holding my helmet. And I heard like, oi, 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 like that. I look, it's Ron Dennis. And I go like, oh my God. Like, I remember watching him being Senna's boss. Senna was my idol and Senna's boss. And I, like, I had so much respect for him. And he's like, the way he's calling me, I knew he was pissed. And I said, oh, here we go now. He said, um, what do you think you were doing today? And I said, I had to say, I'm racing, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what I was doing. And he said, yeah, well, if you don't learn good manners to race, because racing the championship leader for 14th place, which was at the beginning of the, and then for the 12th place, because people were retiring. So we start fighting, I think I was maybe 16. By the end of the fight, maybe we were like, I don't know. So he goes like fighting for with the championship leader for and pole sitter for this position is not racing. And if you don't learn good manners, the good way of racing or good manners, something like that, I have power enough to finish your career tomorrow. How did that make you feel? I said, I'm sorry, but uh, if you lost the race today, it's not my fault. It's because the cars couldn't start on the formation lap. And then came Norbert Haug and Norbert Haug was screaming half in German, half in, in English. I couldn't barely understand what he was saying. And I just left. So when you had dinner with DC and Jos and Mark Webber in Istanbul a couple yeah. of years ago, did you talk about it then to David? Yes, I spoke to David, yes. But actually, I never had, a, had a, any 
confrontation with David. We spoke uh, the following test, which was in money course. He came and, talk, and spoke to me and he said, I understand you are fighting for your career. You are in the back of the, the grid. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you had some radio calls to hold me back behind. I understand. I said... He's a racer. Yeah. He, I think he would have done the same. And if you remember, uh, the following race was in Canada. And who gets called for the press conference? Me, David. Of course. Michael and Jax. Ron Dennis didn't show up. And I'm sitting, like, and I remember that I'm sitting and the and first questions to Enrique Bernardi, I'm thinking, I'm beside Michael Schumacher, David Coulter, Jacques Villeneuve. Why the questions for me? And the question was about Monaco. And Michael took the microphone and didn't let me answer. And he said, you, enough of you guys. You, he did what he had to do. And I hope if he gets in that situation again, he does it again. What a nice thing for him to do. Yeah. Did it mean a lot to you? Of course, it meant a lot to me. I, I, got a, I got a text from him in that night and say, you did completely right. So you got a text from Michael yeah. on the Sunday evening yeah. of Monaco saying you'd done the right yes. thing. Yes. I had a, a, a sort of relationship with him because during my, my Red Bull years in Austria, Ralph lived in Salzburg. And, you know, imagine we were like two drivers... There's not much to do in Salzburg, so we met quite often. We went skiing, and I went to his mountain house, and so on, so on. So I had a relationship with the family, true Ralph, in those days. And yes, that was a good, very good gesture from him. I really enjoyed that, and uh, that meant a lot to me. It was a good support. Actually, uh, that night I had dinner with, with Didi Mataschitz in Monaco, and he was very, very supportive, very... Uh, excited about the race and how things go, you know, and, and yes, from the people which were around me, I got the right, the great, right energy about that. And I'm imagining Tom Walkinshaw was saying similar things as well. Tom Walkinshaw was happy, yes. I think he went to talk to Ron after the race. Did you tell Tom yes. what Ron had told you? Yes, yes. I, I, when I got back to the, <laughs> when I got back to the, to the pits, like my engineers were like, oh, how it, what took you so long, you know? I said, well, the car broke and blah, blah, blah. He said, he said plus, Ron Dennis just told me that. And then the word spread. And then he came, did Ron really say that to you? I said, yes. And then I think he went to talk to, to Ron. I think Tom defended me. I think he said, uh, the day you pay, you pay my drivers, you tell them what to do. Quite a good <laughs> reply, to be fair. Yeah. Now, this was, of course, pre-social media. But what kind of vibe did you get from the fans about what you'd done that day? It was like, a, you know, I'm, I'm Brazilian, right? And um, I would say that uh, I got always a lot more support in Europe, either in Austria or in Italy, sometimes in England also because I spent two years in England. Then in Brazil, being Brazilian is, uh, is hard because we had Senna, we had Fittipaldi, we had Nelson. And, you know, it's like either you are a hero or you are sort of like a zero, you know. I always felt that way. And uh, I got a lot of more support like uh let's say going to the following race actually i would get more requests for autographs for pictures i start to get a little bit more popular after that, that race